because I missed the No Way Home spoiler discussions. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'll watch it on. I think I'm going to see it Sunday. So uh, what is what is the deal with this? I'll tell you this much, man. I love Spider Man. I really like Spider Man. He's one of my favorite characters. I'm looking forward to seeing this movie. I want to watch it. I think it'll be really good. But I'm also looking forward to watching it so that people can shut the fuck up about it. Well, that's like, the thing. Like, I am done with hearing about Spider Man. To be YouTube, perfectly honest with you, some of the you. YouTuber people that I watch occasionally, like John Campia, it's like Spider Man, and they're talking like, why isn't there, oh, more, why, why isn't there more buzz for Book of Boba Fett? And he's like, well, it's one word, Spider Man Two. It's like, really? It's yeah. that big a fucking deal? Yeah. I mean, to me, I, I mean, Grant, I'm not a good example. I have seen, <laughs> I saw the first Andrew Garfield Spider Man. I didn't see any of the other ones. Like. Spider Man was a character I liked him when I was like, like three. I had like a Spider Man plushie, but I never watched a cartoon really. And yeah, I, I, you know, just like eh, it's not your bag. No, man, it's not, not your bag. All. But it's like the level. Cambia of just, though, like he, like that's that's like a big part of like his operation there. Like I, he he's in the like, cottage <laughs> Spider Man industry. Dude. I mean, he's like everyone's writing in. So do you think that blah 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 blah? I'm like Jesus Christ. I understand like you know being into something, but. Holy shit! It's not like it's, it's not like it's like, like as much as I was detached from Endgame, like I had no interest in it whatsoever. I did get it. I yeah. people, people have been watching movies for years. This is the culmination. Okay, of so I will say this: the fucking you know. Okay, fandom. so a part and and, and a part, uh, the big part of why Spider Man is being treated this way is because it's a lot of the same thing, like, um, you know, there's in the MCU. Um, yeah, Anybody see. Booster this Monday, stay safe. Oh, we were boosted up and safe. Oh yeah, I, I, I've been boosted for King Toby on the screen one last time, allegedly. Yeah, that's what I was gonna. That's what I was talking. That's what I was talking about. Well, I so, know that. Like, they're yeah. supposedly gonna bring all the Spider Man back. Well, yeah, because like they're doing a multiverse kind of yes. thing. So like, it's the idea that there's gonna be Toby Maguire there, possibly, and Andrew Garfield there, possibly. We already know that Alfred uh, uh, Moreno, yeah, who played uh, Doc Ock, we've seen him, Molina. He's there, and then like there's this hints of all these other people there. They got Daredevil from the Netflix show. He's, he's in there. He's in there. He's in there. They're, they're squeezing him in there. There's all sorts of Ray other from Star Wars is in there. Ray, Ray from Star Wars is fucking in <laughs> there. Vader Sonic the Hedgehog's in there. <laughs> the, the, the pre the pre CGI fix. Lee it's the ugly Lee. Sonic that's in there. <laughs> <laughs> Link from Legend of Zelda's in there. Link's in there, dude. Like, Some of those all guys from the Mask TV show from Fucking, the 80s, those guys are in there. The kids from South Park, they're in there. It's basically Ready Player One. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Only all live action. Only You've all live all action. All roles. Uh, I mean, so I mean, so for people that like Spider, for people that like the original Spider Mans with Raimi, uh, the Sam Raimi ones, and you know, for people that and there are some for whatever reason that like the Andrew Garfield ones, yeah, like it's a big deal for them, and it's cool to see. Uh, Alfred Molina back and, and all the other implications that the story is going to have in the future MCU movies. So that's really what's driving the like intense amount of like in-game level. Oh my god, this is going to be super fucking epic and like destroy everything. And maybe everything. also just like society wants a, wants something to obsess about. Like they want to roll the clock back on something. It's just like it's a really big movie event. Really the first really big movie event in, in a post-pandemic era where people are like, I want to see this in the theaters. I mean, Dune was sort of that, but it's still, because it you know got released on TV at the same time, yeah. you know, it kind of blunted its, a, its appeal. 98%, dude. Based People on are 81, losing their... Based on 81 reviews, that's not an insignificant number of reviews. A bigger, bolder Spider-Man sequel, No Way Home, expands the franchise's scope and stakes without losing sight of its humor and heart. It's funny, though, like, the whole Rick and Morty-ing of... of of Rick cinematic and canon. Or Rick and you know Morty. I mean? That's what it is. Because, like, Rick and Morty was, like, the first show since Sliders in the fucking 90s. Sliders. To really... To, well, <laughs> I so love Sliders. It was, it was ahead, it of, was its, it was ahead of its time, dude. But actually... Sliders and uh, Quantum Leap. Well, Quantum Leap was not multiple universes. No. It was, it was one Just, universe. But... Fringe was two universes, so Fringe was. I didn't see Fringe. You know, but but Sliders was really like if unless you count the Next Generation, where the one where they bring them all together. Yeah. But Sliders was the first to really embrace like the, the multiverse, you know, there's multiverse sort of. everywhere, and then Fringe was a parallel universe, and then uh, Rick and Mo Rick and Morty just took it and just like Rick and Morty oh. took it to a whole other level. And so now all these, you know, isn't that essentially how Endgame like isn't that how they kind of squared the circle on the, on that? No, that design? was a time travel thing. Uh, okay, but I will say. In the defense of Marvel, like they've been doing weird multiverse well, shit. All comic for, books have, yeah, yeah, for a long, long time. 
And it's really Rick and Morty that took the absurdity of like multiverse adventures and kind of made it into something that was not only digestible in a weird way, but also like it, it seemed it seemed like it made sense. It was cool. Well, it's and, like and it was funny. It, you know, so you get into the Spider Verse, which I have the idea of all these, and then of course this movie is taking that to the next level. Yeah. But then you see the same thing in, in, in the WB and the Warner Brothers thing. You got, you know, in the new Flash movie, you got Batman. Yeah. From the original Batman, you know, uh, Michael Keaton's coming back because so you can. You know, you can, you can but this is also <laughs> this is also very corporate driven. This is like well, no, that's my point. This is like all right, who's still alive that we well, can well, pull no, in and it, fucking? What you can do is just basically it's still like okay, guys, don't worry so much about canon. You know, the, the fandoms have become so vocal and so butthurt on so many different levels that you know it's like it's hard to please everybody. But hey, if you can just. You know, it's a multiverse, baby. We were doing this over here, then we're doing this over here. You didn't like Ben Affleck as Batman. We got this other Batman over here ready to go. Uh, fucking what's his face is coming back, and Chris Nolan's back. He's making more Batman movies. Yeah. It's like, well, how does that square with any of this? Don't worry about that. It's a fucking other universe, man. Just, just you know, you want to have fun in the movie theater or not? And people are like, yes, yes, we do. Take our money. You know, I've been waiting for it with Star Wars because you know, it's like it seems like that is just I, I, that, well, would be, I think that would be re that would that would really be rough. I think. But Star there's Wars. a subset of fandom in Star Wars that wants so bad for them to, like, multiverse, multiverse Star Wars, Star Wars? And, and, and just be like, all that sequel shit was just like, oh. a, that was a parallel universe. And in this parallel universe, Rey doesn't exist, Luke Skywalker's a total badass, and Kylo Ren's here because he was cool. <laughs> Kylo Ren's here. You know, so. Well, I don't know. Well, it's not just, well, okay, so, it's not just a universe where all the things that the fans liked or disliked are gone, the things they like are there. It's also bringing that and merging it into the universe that they know. So, like, I don't know how that would work at a Star Wars capacity. Uh, I mean, what? Because they kind of, like, the, the idea that you would get, like, oh, you know, the Batman from, you know, Michael Keaton's Batman, and then you're getting this Flash and that, and you're putting them all together, and they're having their thing. That exists in a multiverse capacity because those were never connected ideas to begin with. Like, Batman was his own thing. In, the, in 1980 whatever just like Spider-Man they didn't know that it was going to be an MCU when they made Spider-Man in 2001 but now it's this whole thing so in order to like milk that cow for every drop of milk he has in him yeah, well, you, you connect it with the multiverse and for Star Wars like it's always been a connected story that they've been pulling together from from moment one. So like whatever they did the prequels, they already were doing that with like talking about what was going on in the originals. When they did the sequel trilogy, they brought back Luke and Han and all of them. So they already were kind of doing the same thing without needing to do a multiverse treatment on it. So I don't really know how they would do a multiverse treatment in Star Wars unless they were like oh, bringing yeah. in the expanded universe stuff that they, they decanonized. I mean, well, I mean, they could easily do it. I, I guess I could say I don't understand watch, why they would. If you though. watch, oh, I, I mean, I you know, if you watch Rebels, uh, there's even talk that like the Mandalorian and like the the the, 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 the series of shows that are taking place after Return of the Jedi, and there's there's areas of the, uh, there's areas of the fandom that are convinced themselves that that is actually the the sequel continuity going forward, and it doesn't actually lead to the sequel movies. That's what that there was a big rumor. So they think the Mandalorian is completely divorced from the sequels. Yes. Well, the, there's uh, this is sub this is a subset of the fandom. The idea that like you know, well, well Dave Filoni and John Favreau they're gonna they're gonna retcon the sequels. That's actually gonna be like a a, a, a parallel thing. It doesn't really and, and like the Mandalorian, all that shit going to a new another where Luke is badass and the last Jedi never happened. And there's there was there was talk that there's a war in Lucasfilm right now because these these guys want to like throw all that out, but you know Kathleen Kennedy wants to keep all of it in. I mean it's there's there's I've seen those those uh, the the discourse around that, huh? Yeah, but the funny thing is is that in in, in the last season of Rebels. There was a thing called the war, the world between worlds in Star Wars that allowed one character, spoiler alert, the one character moved to essentially travel through time. Yeah. And it was basically like a astral plane that connected, that had portals in different times and the character was like, and so they're like, they're going to use the world between worlds to go back and change the past, which will then make everything that happened in the sequel trilogy like an alternate future that never ever happens. I mean, people are just like, they're pulling anything, you know, anything that yeah, they have to accept 
you know, that the, 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 the sequel trilogies uh, uh, happened in, the, in, the, in their Star Wars, in their personal Star Wars canon. Yeah, that's very strange. I, uh, I mean, I would have loved something like that for the prequels, you know, back in like 2006 or whatever. Like, oh man, you mean they can go back in time and, just, and, and Jar Jar I never do, existed? I do all you know of that stuff. Mean? But, you know, what are you going to do? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, it's To me, it, it makes as much sense as multiverse shit could ever make. It makes more sense that the studios that holds the license to these various IPs that have been that had ha, that have had adaptations over time are using the multiverse to thread those adaptations into one thing, uh, rather than like trying to use a multiverse to retcon aspects of like your past ip that you released not too long ago oh. is there any validity to the idea that like dave filoni and john favreau are having like a secret civil war with kathleen kennedy not that not that i know of i mean the thing is is that like i imagine probably it's like any company that makes creative stuff i imagine that there are people who have ideas and some people that like them and other people that don't and they probably have meetings where they disagree and yeah. they, you know, well, and the, obviously. I mean, uh, uh, you know, and the thing is, is that like, I, I don't, I, I don't know, like the idea. I, I just think the idea that that, that there's a elaborate civil war in the within the company and blah blah. You know, it just just seems dumb. You know? Yeah, I, I mean, if there, I mean, if there was, I feel like we'd 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 have heard about it. You know, it's hard to keep those kinds of things under wraps at, at large studios. Yeah, I mean, you'd think that someone would quit and just be like, fuck that, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna say what really happened, because you see it all the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think that most of the time, it's like, uh, it, things are probably a lot more boring than, you know, than, than what people would like, maybe would like to think. Especially know? when there's like, very little content in between like big pops so we didn't have a mandalorian this year yeah and it's been a while since you know or it would have been a while uh between season two and book of boba fett and there wasn't a star wars movie and you know well what else are you gonna do you're gonna talk about your theories on what's happening yeah. at lucas i mean there are some people online that just say crazy crazy shit like some Star Wars YouTuber guys, like Mike Zero is one of them, and he's just like Mike I mean, Zero. That, yeah, it's all he does is he he, he posts like a video, like you know, he posts like a video every day, and it's just just a lot of it. He, he I mean, he he just has to probably make up, you know, he just makes the shit up. Like yeah, he got one eight hours ago, ten hours ago, one day ago. <laughs> he's got two. He's like he's posting at least twice a day. George, uh, John, George, and Dave, George are resetting Star Wars. There you Wait, go. Okay, this guy. okay, I got it. I'm gonna mute this real quick. Let's, <laughs> let's just let's just let's just take a little sippy sip of this. Guy. <laughs> sippy, it's a little sippy sip of this guy's content here. <laughs> <laughs> While we are just a couple of weeks out from the release of the book of Boba Fett, a lot of Star Wars fans are also heavily focused on when the marketing is going to start for the Obi-Wan Kenobi TV series, the filming of the Ahsoka Tano TV show starring Rosario Dawson, and more to come as well for the Bad Batch Season 2 that's also going to become a part of Star Wars 2022. So with that being said, one thing that a lot of fans have been very focused on as well is whether or not George, John, and Dave are able to pull things off with, of course, everything when he says George, is he talking about Star Lucas? Universe, right? Is the Lucas actually involved in any capacity? It's going to be a combination of movies, TV shows, be it live action or animated, books, novels, comics, and let's not forget about the video games. I mean, I'm sure that you guys saw Star Wars Eclipse. I do suggest that you guys go ahead and check that out because that is one hell of an amazing experience when it comes to cinematics. So moving forward beyond all of this, we already know that Jon Favreau and Dave Filoni have a very in-depth plan of how they're going to be using a lot of elements from the Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels in live action form. We already know that Ezra, Sabine Wren, and Grand Admiral Thrawn are making their way into the Ahsoka Tano series. And we're going to be learning about more major characters coming our way for that show in the coming weeks, so keep your eyes open. So what's really exciting, however, is that with both Disney and Lucasfilm now focused on their new Star Wars TV shows and movies that are currently in di different phases of development, creators John Favreau, George Lucas, and Dave 
are putting in all of their effort to bring Star Wars on the right path. Now, further, it's described, however, that they are planning something huge for the Ahsoka Tano series that is best described to be astronomical changes to the Star Wars universe. See, it's go, noted that they go. are planning to use the world between worlds to change many Boom. moments in Star Wars history during the Ahsoka Tano series for Disney+. Plus. One drastic change that they will be implementing using the world between worlds is brand new meanings to the death of Darth Vader and Anakin Skywalker. It's described that Lucasfilm plans to have Ahsoka Tano enter into the world between worlds, where she is set to interact with one of the portals that will bring her to the very moment that Anakin finds himself in conflict as he watches his son. So this guy is just basically reading life. fanfic. Like, this is now, incredibly so detailed, yeah. like, yeah. very specific reach out plot points. Through the world between worlds in order to help guide him with what, of course, conflict he's going through in reminding him that he is indeed Anakin Skywalker and that he needs to save his bloodline by saving Luke to bring real balance to the Force. Ahsoka Tano is described the whole great knowledge about the past and aspects of the I mean, future. Where, where, where is he getting this? In? I don't know, dude. He's, he's reading the script. He's reading the, he has the script. He has yeah, the yeah. actual fucking... Like, <laughs> I mean, I'm really great friends with John Favreau, and I get a daily rundown of their discussions. Seriously, like that's. If you go to his video up the very top, like, uh, like the this John one? Favreau uh, in trouble with Kathleen Kennedy, the truth. Bum bum bum. This is Mike Zero. Make sure to subscribe if you're in TV shows that are currently being worked on by John Favreau, Dave Filoni, George Lucas, Bob Chapek, and others out there. Bob so Chapek? He's not working is on Bob these shows. Chapek. He's doing a lot of work. <laughs> is Bob Chapek doing a punch-up on it, on the scripts? I myself cannot believe that we have a lot of great new creators coming on board over at Lucasfilm that are really going to bring everything together. However, when it all dwindles really down to that. everything related to John Favreau himself, I mean, this is the man that's really pouring his life and soul into really making Star Wars possible and to really kind of turning things around for the better. Making it possible? So when we go ahead and examine everything related to what's been going on with The Mandalorian Season 3, to the Ahsoka Tano series, to the marketing of the Book of Boba Fett, everything seems to be working in order right now, very smoothly. The process is going very How do you know, dude? Well. He, is he watching <laughs> the dailies? <laughs> I think he is. Bumps in the road I think he's a producer on the show. He might be. particular Star Wars TV series. That, of course, involves Kathleen Kennedy uh -oh. and Leslie Headland of Star Wars The Acolyte, and how it actually involves Jon Favreau. Now, this is a big deal because this has been going on for a number of weeks now, and recently, finally, it has come to a close. So, let's get right into it. Now, this, of course, involves Favreau mixing in with Kathleen Kennedy and Leslie Headland and what's been going on for the Acolyte TV series. So now that both Disney and Lucasfilm have like focused on their new Star Wars projects like Star Wars Ahsoka and even the Kenobi series, it's described sources. that creator John okay, Favreau has been sure. making big adjustments behind. Further, it's described that Kathleen Kennedy has recently been having some problems with Favreau being a part of the Acolyte TV show in different ways ever since he got his. <laughs> I'm sorry. Could you uh, refresh my memory on what the Acolyte is? It's a show that about. I think it's. It, it takes place. I think in the latter part of the High Republic or the early part of the prequels, like the earliest, like right before the prequels happen. And it's about like a Sith, like Siths in training or something. Siths in training? Yeah. Okay. I, I guess I must have missed when this was announced or, or, or whatever. Yeah. So I then like, did, <laughs> did fucking, I mean, did, did, did John Favreau have any, like, it seems like John Favreau is just the producer. Yeah. Like, for this show. I, I mean, who knows, dude. Who's and that it may have always been that way. <laughs> I mean, it probably... The thing was, is it's weird. He he, he constantly... He, he posts all this stuff, but he I, I don't know where he's reading it or if he's just making it up. I mean, he posts twice a day, you know, or if someone's telling him this stuff. But I can't imagine that he could be in, in, in enough contact with these guys to get, so I get this granular level this of This many details. videos. Yeah, and it's like, he also, if you notice, he does a lot of recapping. You know what I mean? The, the, the text from one video to another is, is actually pretty similar. You know, he's yeah. like, so it's, so, you know, he has a really like circular way of talking. You know what I mean? Where it's... Yeah, like, it's, it's just pretty, like, It's pretty weird. Well, it's it's kind of like if you front-loaded with enough jargon, yeah, then totally. it makes it seem like what little snippet of very suspicious information that yeah. you seed after it has more weight and legitimacy 
It's like a yeah. it's, it's a it's a common con artist trick. Yeah, he could be worse though. I mean, he could be that guy from Geeks and Gamers. So, you know. uh, I don't even I don't know anything about. Yeah. I went to Geeks and I, somebody yeah. was saying something. I think it may have been on the Movie Madness channel. They were saying something about Geeks and Gamers. Yeah, you don't. That guy is... I clicked on their channel and like the very first video, <laughs> the very first video I saw was like. Oh, what was it? It was like Republicans can play video games too, or something like that. Yeah, no, it's yeah, totally. It's and as soon as I saw that, I was like, oh, "That that's his jam." Oh, fuck these guys, these guys, geeks and gamers. Spielberg's West Side Story bombs just because queers were in it. <laughs> Disney facing cancellations after what? Probably something they did that was pro women. Yeah, probably. After marketing disaster, huh? Star Wars got a uh, Galactic Star Cruise fail. What is Galactic Star? Oh, there Cruise? we go. Cowboy Bebop canceled after one woke, woke season. season? <laughs> <laughs> after one woke season. <laughs> That's funny. Like, should we do a regular season of show? No, no, no. Let's do a woke season and see how it goes. No, let's just let's just try. Let's add a little. Let's turn the woke up yeah, to exactly. about eight. The woke is oh, on, that's too much woke. Yeah, the woke it's is too on, much woke. It's on four and a half right now. We're gonna need it at like an eight or a nine. She can't handle that kind of woke. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I warned him. I warned him. <laughs> she can't take much more, Captain. It's too much woke. It's too much woke, Captain. EA bans Kyle Rittenhouse from positive play. Okay, well, whatever. So whatever. There, there you go. That's these, that's, these, that's, that's these guys. Yeah, that's where this guy's coming from. So, you know, my, my And Kanto is another works. Disney flop. Okay. <clears throat> so these guys are just like anything woke flops. Is that Adam Carolla? There you yeah, go. Adam Carolla. That's all I really need Discuss to read. Discusses woke Hollywood. Woke. In a new segment for Prager U. <laughs> Prager U? Did you know Prager U? Did you, get, you ever oh, see any of those commercials? Unfortunately. Yeah. If by very very some rare chance he does watch he does watch this video, we're not really lying about you because we don't really know anything about you. We're just reading your. We're just, uh, yeah, we're just we're just we're just. I, I will I will admit that this is a very yeah. shallow. Exactly. A very shallow. We're not we're not all that concerned with looking deeper. No, no, I, I see what's going on here, and yeah. uh, I've decided that I want none exactly. of exactly. I want none of your gazpacho, fine sir. <laughs> yeah. <no. laughs> No, thank you, sir. And as far as this dude is concerned, this guy just seems like uh, he's... I mean, I think this guy just makes up a bunch of stuff. Yeah, I think he's just making shit up for And I think the people that watch him actually kind of know he does, and they just want to hear about some Star Wars stuff. Yeah. They want to watch a video... They just want their hopes. Yeah, it's just like fun to... It's it, you, know, it, 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 you know... Sometimes it's fun to hope, but I mean, you should never do it in like well, a way where you're... speculate and be like, yeah, yeah Disseminating happen, you know misinformation. I mean? It's like when a bunch of kids kind of like pretend... That there's like, you know, a monster in the creek. You know what I'm saying? And it's like kind of a mutual... <laughs> the Rise of Skywalker sequel leak. This is insane! And a new Skywalker is born. Uh, yeah. And, and, and you know, this is only one guy. There's only one guy. Well, there's that Geeks and Gamers dude too, but... Well, yeah, but those... I don't those, I don't know if those guys are like... You know, I don't want to... I don't want to paint... Mike Zero with the other brush. I mean, I, 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 yeah, yeah, I, I yeah. don't, I don't, I don't get the sense that Mike Zero is like raging like, against woke exactly, culture. Exactly. Yeah. He, you know? His agenda, I think, is only to entertain, regale people with tales, possibly true or untrue, about the future of Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, if there is any kind of like you know agenda there, you know, it's it, it's a backseat to his, uh, you know, his his Star Wars. Um, journalism. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <guess>. Journalism. <laughs> That's a good way to put it, I guess. Or. Uh, Maybe editorializing his Star Wars editorializing. I mean, you know, I, don't, I don't, I don't care if uh, you know if someone wants to be you know a right wing guy in his personal life, but it's like you know you make your YouTube channel, and it's like every single video, every single that's all, video, that's yeah. all the content you got. It's you know just what I mean? like the yeah. woke liberals are at it again. Spider Man's gay, you know. What I mean? It's like. I mean, Cowboy Bebop canceled after one woke season. Well, just one woke season. The funny thing is, like, Jesus, man, white people are just so annoying. I, 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 don't, I, don't, know, I don't know what it is with you guys, man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, woke was a word that was just innocently dropped by Erica Baidu in a song. And, you know, people, some people picked it up. I was like, oh, that's cool, whatever. And then white people got their hands on it. And just, like, now it turned to this thing where the only people, the only people who use the word woke are guys like that. Like, nobody else ever says woke. Like, nobody used, like, the, the, the definition and usage of it was so horrendously corrupted into something so fucking, well, you know, I think, reactionary. I think that, like, 
there's probably several things going on. I think that anybody, so anytime there's a there's there's a, a term, right? The people that, and it becomes a, however it starts, you know what I mean? And it becomes a term that people use at first, maybe in small increments of, of, of various you know, clicks of colloquialisms or whatever, and then eventually it gets, you know, kind of uh, co-opted by a larger group of people. If there's a, gr- a group of people that don't like it, if it represents something negative to them, yeah, they will co-opted. use it far longer than the other people because they just they, they hit upon it and they moved on. But these people, it, it represents something, you know what I mean, negative for them. And, and so it's, it's, a whole, it's a whole thing. You know what I mean? It's the best way that they can uh, that they can that, that they can describe that. Yeah. You know, um, and I, you know, I think that, you know, I, I it just so happens in this instance that people on the right, you know, kind of cultural right, you know what I'm saying, that have issues with uh, what they think wokeness represents. I didn't know it was there by Badu. I thought, I mean, I, I always thought it was. I mean. I didn't think it came from Redbone, but I thought I thought Redbone popularized it. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. If you liked what I said, what Justin said, if you like the content we're providing, if you had any kind of laughs at all, even if you hate us, if you hate my guts, if you want to stab me, if you want to say all sorts of horrible things to me, cool. Like, like the video, subscribe. You'll get fed all sorts of shit you'll probably hate. And if you like us, you'll get fed all sorts of shit you probably like. So please and thank you.